tahun memperkasa wanita 2018 akan menyerlahkan potensi wanita merentasi segenap sektor. Kita akan memastikan usaha kolaborasi yang berterusan bagi meningkatkan pencapaian dan memberi manfaat kepada wanita Malaysia. Wanita Gemilang #TMW18 We are very very fortunate and very lucky in Malaysia because we have none other than the right honorable prime minister himself he's very much into this and he went you know in fact sometimes i said wow you know the prime minister he's so he's so serious and he's so eager to see that 30% target achieved in the private sector in fact on the 1st of january this year he said he's going to name and shame the companies name and shame the companies that doesn't have a woman member on board um, well i said sir the figure now is getting much better i think we are left with seven jlcs from at one time there were so many jlcs that didn't have any women on board now it's only seven and i told him sir you know being 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 the women you know sometimes we can be very harsh but that time we should be very you know the motherly so i told sir i said inshallah maybe what we get is not a name and shame but maybe what we'll get will be a name and fame one day what happened was um i saw one particular sick a horse the horse was very sick so i was asking this trainer i said what happened to the horse and then he said uh horse sakit perut lah kak okay okay the horse was actually having stomach ache so he said okay then what are you giving so are you giving the horse he said we actually gave the horse uh ampicillin all right this is a human antibiotics and it's very expensive kak how much are you buying he said i'm buying a pack of 500 uh for 180 ringgit i said oh ding so i said i sell to you two for 180 and then he said Ka, are you sure yes okay how do i go and things like that you know it's just a horse that you know you, you can really think about something because the horse is consuming human antibiotics so and then finally he said okay Ka, i think we want to have 100 bottles 180 times 100 bottles ding i don't make 60 ringgit anymore which you were actually making 60 ringgit a day all right so we started to grow and we sell antibiotics then i started to realize the fact that hey hello we have got kementerian dalam negeri who is actually have uh, also have this uh, horse unit that one was dbkl also have dogs they are also consuming human antibiotics then we say ding okay let's go and make sure we stumble upon this opportunity to sell human antibiotics to horses and dogs we go to communities we ask them what they produce and we ask them could you make this just a little less sweet or can you make this with natural sugar can you make this without sugar and they say why because that's what the market wants so we form the bridge to market because otherwise they will make it the way you know they put a lot of sugar because sugar is a natural preservative so you can have a jam that's three years old that's still good but they don't know that lifestyle diseases are diabetes and people are watching their sugar every day so even that we have to tell them After 16 years of trying to have a baby, going here and there, finally she gave up. She was very stressed, hopeless, and very sad. As an Eastern woman, we would like to have a baby, especially because women should stay at home and raise the kids usually. And she cannot have that. So in one day, she was broken in tears, and my great-grandmother told her, after going here and there, no result. So let me take care of you. I will take care of you using Jamu. Would you trust me on this? And she said, okay, let's try. At that moment, she was 39 years old. And with the Jamu, 
with the loving touch, warming the tummy and prayers for almost three years doing that every day. And finally, one fine day, the period stopped. And she was like, oh my God, my period stopped, you know? And she came to the doctor and the doctor just said, okay, calm down. Because of your previous condition and your age, being 39, um, it might be the sign of early menopause. And then that struck her again, and she came down into tears again, went back home. And, but the doctor said, please come back in three, we in three months, and let's see wh whether um, any progress for your period being stopped. And she came back 90 days again, and the doctor put the, at that time, there's no uh, ultrasound, so they put the Doppler or something like that. And there was my heartbeat, a very powerful one, as powerful as the power of Jammu. We knew that um, by then this, this medicine was life-saving. And, and the next lesson I, I learned through this journey was the inequality that I was seeing. I had rich patients who could afford the medicine at 2,200 2, ringgit and went from, you know, almost dying to being saved because they had this life-saving medicine but because they could afford 2,200 ringgit. And yet, my same patients who could not afford the 2,200 ringgit were dying like, you know, nobody's business. And, and so that, that was the other thing that spurred me to, um, to join the Malaysian AIDS Council uh, and work alongside Marina and, and Chris Lee and others to advocate with the government to try and bring the prices of, uh, of, of the medicine down. And we fought hard and we did, and we managed to um, re bring in the generic medicine so that all patients could afford. We could give patients free treatment and it, to this day it remains uh, free for, for all patients. And therefore you don't have this, you know, if you're rich, you live, if you're poor, sorry, you're going to die. And now of course, we want to be a marketplace not just for Philippines, but for ASEAN. For healthy, organic products, mostly made by small producers, and mostly by women. Why? Because it's the women who multitask. While they bring the kids to school, they come home, they make that peanut butter. Many of our rural women cannot hold eight to five jobs, or nine to six jobs because they have to do things at home. And this is why it's important to give women the chance to empower themselves, even if they're staying at home. If the woman is a young mother, millennial or Gen Z, then you ask her to take on an online job, like virtual assistants, freelance designers, freelance writers. The internet is the biggest equalizer, if you will because now you have no reason not to earn a living. And earning a living and earning money, financial empowerment, is the biggest tool to empower a woman against social problems, domestic abuse, trafficking, all these social issues, which I don't want to delve in, but it's there. It's the big elephant in the room. We've got these social problems. So we'd like to be a global marketplace and this is to be an inspiration for all of you. Maybe you can establish something in Malaysia. If you want Echo Store, we can talk after the session. <laughs> and that's coffee, it's chocolate. It's all the things we use every day. It's all the things we buy for our homes. Coffee, tea, chocolate, sugar, rice. So it's not just about coffee anymore. It's about a business that will sustain a lot of producers while allowing consumers like us to live healthy lives. It's not expensive to live a healthy life. You just have to know how to use natural products, buy local, 
check all around you, the closer you get your products uh, to the point of use, it's more environment friendly. So low coverism is key. Eating local, buying local. I know I can't sell you the Philippines just yet, but if we all look around us, there's a lot to explore locally. And what could be the secret sauce? The secret sauce is simply doing things you love and doing things that do not seem like work. You know, what are the laws that are itself discriminating to women? So one of the things that we look into and which I think um, um, is implemented this 1st January uh, this year is the Domestic Violence Act. We amended the Domestic Violence Act twice. One in 2012, um, which incorporated, um, you, you know, um, for example, on uh, discrimination, even on emotion. Because prior to that, we didn't take into consideration emotion. So we put 2012. Even emotionally, they are affected, is, is regarded as violence. And then very recently we amended and it is already gazetted and implemented by January this year. Is we are even having an extra, we, we made the Domestic Violence Act more, how to say, more protective of those who, who need protection. So we have what we call an emergency protection order. Meaning to say any violence that is inflicted on any members of the household, then you can immediately go to the nearest uh, welfare department for you to get protection within 24 hours. Wow. And that protection will be, uh, will be effective for a week. And we use that EPO, we call it Emergency Protection Order. It's like a pulling off period. You know, sometimes husband, wife, you know, maybe mother-in-law, father-in-law, you know, any, any members, any members of the, is incorporated inside there. You know, sometimes it's just um, maybe small, small fights, but emotion, you know, they got maybe ter, you know, the ter beaten a bit, you know. So we said, never mind, we, we, we protect. Whoever is the, the party, the aggrieved party or the one being inflicted upon. And then let's give them a week. But one thing inside that uh, emergency protect protection order, whoever the perpetrator will have to leave the house. Prior to this, they are both still in the house. Tapi with this emergency protection order, the one who inflicted, you know, uh, inflicted the violence, you know, will have to leave the house. It can be husband leaving the house, it can be wife leaving the house, it can be father-in-law leaving the house, it can be the mother-in-law leaving the house. When we say leave the house, it's just to give that space. So that, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you meet and then maybe you feel like spanking again, you know. But spanking. <laughs> spanking. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Niza, yeah. if you see the cases, Oh my goodness, it's horrible. I'm sure. You know, I saw one case, it's golf stick, you know, that golf club, eh? because I don't play golf yes. so much, you know. Golf club. I forgot about my golf. It's the club, that big thing is called club, right? Yes. The one that you start to tee off, that one? It's, uh, what is it? Yeah. It's broken in two. I said, my goodness, what did... What did this fellow, I mean, yeah, I, do, I keep that word, you know. What did that fellow do to you? Patah, broken, you know, that is a very... Um, and if you see the kind of... Um, the, the kind, it's, it's horrible actually, Nizam, it's horrible. So that's why this EPO is very important. So you get some protection, you know, while... Now, this is another funny thing. <laughs> it happens during weekend. It starts from Friday. 
maybe Friday is because they meet, you know. Yeah. So it starts on a Friday, and then Friday you can't go to any government department, right? You can't go to a police station. You can't go to hospital because it's office. It's not office hours. So this is where the emergency protection order is very much needed. And by the way, I got all this input is from the victims. I see. They were the ones who told me to make the um, the Domestic Violence Act more. Uh, how to say it, it served the purpose very well. So I I can bet you, what, 30% if not more of you in the room know someone who has a drug problem. And our reaction thus far has been arrest them and put them in jail. I can tell you that it does not do any good to them, to, to the family members, to society at large because all that happens is they go in jail, they go out, they go in jail, they go out, they go in jail, they get TB. I can tell you there's 7% undiagnosed TB. And um, what we need is a sensible drug policy but nobody seems to want to talk about it and, and there's a very small group of us working in it and we, I feel like we're, you know, um, uh, aliens or something because uh, uh, you know it's it's so like far left uh, to to the norm so my role as um, and and I, I have um, I think um, I have the perfect job I can combine my my love for you know doing the right thing through with HIV and drugs and and so forth and and being able to support that with research and also to nurture the next generation of doctors and researchers um, and so we are hoping to use local evidence like what I saw worked um, in when we advocated for needle exchange and, and methadone to to try and make the government see that what we're doing, locking people with, H with uh, drugs up, if they do not commit any violence or crime, is just about the worst thing you can do with someone who is suffering from a medical disease. When, when, you have, when you're addicted to drugs, it's a medical problem. Um, so why are we handing them over to the police and to the prisons to treat something that needs to be treated? So that's the kind of message that I and a, f a small group of people are trying to pursue and, and, and to get across to the powers that be that um, you know, we've got to change the way we do things. So did we develop this jamu, the postnatal jamu, the fertility jamu, slimming and uh, for acne, different types of jamu for maintaining your health and your beauty. Yeah, so the, and also all the Sari Ayu uh, jamu and cosmetics now certified halal. So it's safe and it's good for the Muslim customers. All of this is supported by the Marta Tilar Innovation Center. So this is the center of the innovation for the research development for our raw materials. Yeah? Because using uh, scientific data is important because jamu usually known by you know, leluhur, tradisi, uh, tradisi orang tua, yeah? tapi there's no scientific data to support it. So we try very hard to give um, data. And we also uh, test it in vitro and FIFO uh, for efficacy and effectiveness of the jamu. So we have a strong Marta Tilar Innovation Center that also collaborated with different research centers uh, nationally and internationally. I change my perspective of making money out of other people's agony. I change my perspective of money is there, but there's something more to money that I must do. At that point in time, I haven't acquired Farmaniaga. So when we went into Farmaniaga, I realized the fact that there are so much things to do and we want to execute our ways of doing business like no longer making money out of other people's agony we are going to make the money out of passion passion of helping people to cure passion of having people to know the fact that at the end of the day the supply that they were requesting from Madiaga to deliver is there 
at the at the passion to save lives we have changed it is because of one particular setback in my life why is because when i actually rushed my daughter to the hospital and it was a mere coincidence that at the emergency in Ampang Putri, the doctor was also my husband's friend, same university. So he was saying that, uh, is this your daughter, Sharif? So he said, no, this, uh, is this your daughter? Yes, this is my daughter. So they were trying, we have got many doctor's friends because uh, by profession, my husband is a doctor. So we have many doctor's friends and all went out on a code blue and tried to revive her and they managed to get the pulse. But again, after five days, she passed away. And I realized at that point in time that if only I didn't deliver what being ordered, what the things or the medications that are being ordered from Pharma Niaga, what will happen to those mothers and when the miracle is not what they are expecting. In a, in a drowned case, you expect miracles most of the time because there is no cure. But in other um, sickness, they must be cured. It can be cured, all right? What if the medicines are not there? You don't deliver it on time. So we turn, I turn the business. I capitalize. That is also my sumo. My daughter is my sumo. Stumbled upon opportunity for me not to take her death. I repeat, to take her departure in this world for me to be better, for me to make sure that whatever I do is not for the sake of money or making money out of other people's agony, but passion to save lives. Thank you. And if you think that I don't mourn of her losses, I do until today. But. I believe that she will be proud of me because she knows the fact that her mother is not crying talking about her story but capitalizing her death to be a better person in this world and to help as many people as I could being in my position to assist the rakyat. That is the setback. Diharapkan semua pihak akan bersama-sama menjayakan TMW 18 ini dan para wanita rebutlah peluang ini wanita gemilang #TMW 18